and welcome to the Rise Center in Amsterdam. It's Saturday, the 8th of September. You're watching IBC TV News. In today's program, connected campaigns. We see how advertisers are meeting the challenge of new platforms. We'll have a special report on how Foxtel of Australia produced eight live channels at the Olympics. And we'll be seeing the latest cameras in the first of our zoned-in reports from around the show halls. But first, new technology like smartphones and tablets has changed the way we get our information. That means advertisers now have more ways to promote their brands. But it's not just the format of adverts that's changing companies are also using social media as a way to find out about customers wants and needs. Marie Claire Kerry Jones reports. Meet the new boss, your customer. The data she shares from comments, reviews and social networks tells a company what to make. Advertising is, is changing and it's more than Probably just shipped. a passing fashion. The growth of social media, smartphones and tablets means customers can now pass on their favorite brands and adverts at the touch of a button to friends across the world. Uh, you know, our business used to be about producing 30 second TVCs um, or posters, you know, very self-contained kind of creative units. That's changed now with the digital world. So consumers don't look at things in a you know, mono-channel way. They look in a multi-channel way. So we have to create content that they can access, that exists out there in the, in the digital universe. Um, it's a very different business for us. So we like to think of ourselves now much more as content producers. Companies used to view us as demographics because they couldn't see what made people different. Today, that content has revolutionized the way companies like IBM market themselves. They say their smarter marketing policy no longer treats customers as a group, but as individuals. Consumers, markets, audiences have more choices in which to consume information. And so what we're finding is that marketers are getting more mature in how to use all those different choices to reach their markets in the very best way. IBM is a brand, and we're evolving our own ways of engaging our customers. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we're a company that uh, works to help our clients be more successful, and the marketers and our clients uh, embrace some of these new techniques. Select a message. Choose who you want to send it to. Then send your message to To do to that, they and other global companies are turning to Facebook and Twitter to see exactly what customers are buying, allowing them to target people better. It's hoped that will give customers what they want and improve the brand for the company. You're watching IBC TV News. Now, as always, many exhibitors have chosen this event to announce major business deals. With a roundup of these and the latest news from around the industry, here's Katrina Renton. Thanks, Rob. And first, one of the biggest players at the show, the Japanese giant Sony, has announced a large batch of orders. Sys Live in the UK will equip its fleet of HD broadcast trucks with Sony cameras, while ITV has bought studio cameras and XD cam camcorders for its regions. Oman TV has kitted out new HD studios with Sony kit, and there have been more broadcast sales to Italy, Norway and Turkey. TSL Systems will supply an end-to-end file-based production and transmission workflow for MediaCore in Singapore. The system will enable MediaCore to transmit its seven free-to-air channels using the DVB T2 television standard. Panasonic has teamed up with Live View of Israel, a specialist in video over cellular systems. They're developing remote and field-based mobile connections for P2 camcorders. Live View's equipment is used by more than 200 broadcasters to stream live pictures over whatever network is available. US group Belden, which bought manufacturer Miranda in July, has announced that the company will join Telecast in a new division. The newly formed Belden Broadcast Division will be led by longtime Miranda CEO Strathgoodship. 
with, uh, with Telecast, it gives us pretty well everything from the camera right through to play out. We don't make the vision mixer, but pretty well all the elements from the camera right up to the, the, the play out station now can be built with Miranda. The Playout Services provider, SBS Broadcasting, has installed a Pixel Power Channel Master scheduling system in its London HQ. The system has been integrated with a front porch digital archive system. They're being used to launch a new 18-channel regional service for Canal 5 in Sweden. And those are some of the stories we've been hearing around IBC. If your company's got an announcement for the programme, come and tell us all about it. You'll find us at the Workflow Solutions Village in Hall 9. Rob. Thanks, Katrina. Now, today is Sports Day at the IBC conference, and that means an inevitable debrief on the 2012 Olympics. NBC had 3,000 people at the Games, but still left its viewers feeling let down. More on this in a moment. But first, a look at the Australian subscription service Foxtel. Its proposition was simple. Live coverage of every medal event in every discipline. And this was branded programming, not just a relay of the host feed. Graham Bowd went to take a look at their operation. The Olympics saw many fine performances, but the gold medal for broadcasting surely belonged to Foxtel. Its viewers got no less than eight channels of live programming, 24 hours a day. And all this delivered by just 160 staff in London. The Aquatic Centre just over there, nicknamed The Wave, James Magnus will be on the hunt for his first Olympic gold. Even before the first spectator set foot in the Olympic Park, Foxtel's presenters found something to say, if only to comment on the burgers at the media centre. That's horribly delicious. So good. Once the action got underway, coverage was relentless. From shooting to shot put, every medal event was shown live, even if most of the subscribers were asleep. No broadcaster had offered this before. Previously, the free-to-air networks who've covered the Olympics have only had one channel and have dictated what the viewers watch. There's 38 disciplines over 26 sports. You just can't do it on one channel. And I think the huge advantage that we've had is that we've, we've been able to spread all that wonderful sport over eight channels. We're able to show all the events in full. The feedback from home has been that's what people have really enjoyed. Coverage was shared with Channel 9, which had exclusive rights to show highlights packages plus the opening and closing ceremonies. Foxtel had two studios at the Olympic Broadcast Centre, but with rents here at a premium, most of its technical operations were off-site. The broadcaster took space in an office building used by the Australian telecoms giant Telstra. All this traffic was carried by just two fibre-optic cables plus a backup pair. This was a highly complex operation, but all went smoothly. We've also built an entire spare presentation system which is standing by ready to use, so if any one of our eight fails, we can switch over to that. But in addition, by keeping the control surfaces at Tabernacle Street, but uh, all the video processing here in the IBC, um, if there's any, any sever severance to the communications, uh, we can continue to play video to air live, we just lose control for a few minutes. Foxtel saw its audience share rise more than tenfold during the Games and won rich praise from the Australian media. Contrast this with NBC, which refused to show many key events live, withholding the best action until peak time. This brought a storm of protest from viewers, but unlike Foxtel, NBC gets most of its revenue from advertisers, a case perhaps of he who pays the piper calls the tune. Graham Bowd reporting there. Well, with me now is Daryl Jefferson, who is one of the senior NBC executives responsible for NBC's Olympic coverage. Daryl, it does seem to be an extraordinary decision not to show any of that coverage live. What, what was behind your thinking? Well, to, to, to be truthful, it, it, we actually showed a great deal of coverage live. Uh, we showed about 75 to 80 percent of the events live across uh, eight television networks and for the first time we streamed every single event live, uh, both uh, to web, to mobile and to tablets. So everyone had the opportunity and the, the ability to see everything they wanted to live. People were angry though, weren't they, that they couldn't see it on their television sets like Usain Bolt's, Bolt's final, they couldn't actually see on their TVs until four hours after the event and of course that's because you're, you're relying on your advertising revenue. 
Well, th that's true. But also, we wanted to create a, a unified package that we could deliver uh, in prime time with both uh, live and delayed coverage to deliver the, the best package and everyone could experience that once uh, on the television. Mm -hmm. But everyone who wanted to see uh, every event at the time that it was uh, happening could see it uh, mm -hmm. whenever they wanted to. I mustn't give you too hard a time because I know that you were, <laughs> you were praised actually for a lot of the innovation that you brought in. Perhaps you could just uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, for, for, as I was saying, for the first time we streamed every single event live. And one of the surprising things is that that actually drove a lot of people to, after seeing the event live, they wanted to see the coverage and how we covered the event uh, later in prime time. So we kind of got a double hit there. Um, <laughs> We did that and we also moved away from a traditional tape library, tape-based library, and moved into a, a media asset management system, which covered not only London and New York, but we have uh, Telemundo in Florida, and we also have uh, some, some offices in Colorado. So we're able to kind of span the globe with, mm -hmm. with the coverage in a file-based way, which is which a big step for us. Yeah, yeah.